Hi, I'm David, and today I'm going to be looking at this article from The Hearty Soul, which teases that taking just one tablespoon of this every day will help heal osteoarthritis. So just what is this miracle compound? Why, it's gelatin, of course. Circle life. Delicious. This is definitely humane. I, I can sleep well. I want them tested. Keep be fresh in the consumer's mind. Yes, you heard me right. Gelatin, the stuff that's derived from the cast-off pig and cow skins of the meat and leather industries, the stuff that makes hot dogs look like prime cuts. Well, according to this article, it can help rebuild the cartilage in your knees, reversing osteoarthritis. That's one heck of a claim, and one that would understandably require quite the burden of proof. But I'm sure the fine folk over at the hearty soul have ample evidence for their claims, because as they state in their about section, we strive to create and share content you can trust. Our articles are written by real world experts and make use of real cutting edge studies. So let's learn about the cutting edge study in question, shall we? According to the article, the study took 175 individuals who all had mild osteoarthritis and randomly, hmm, wonder what type of randomization was used, gave them either a placebo or a daily gelatin supplement, makes sense, contained 10 grams of gelatin, okay, in addition to vitamin C and calcium. Wait, what? The gelatin supplement also contained vitamin C and calcium? Let me just check my notes here. No, this was not written on April 1st. I didn't really have anything in my hands. It was written in January of 2017, although that's something I had to find out from an external website. They're not big on dating their articles over at the Hearty Soul, presumably because that encourages people to keep sharing them long after their breaking news. Anyway, back to the gelatin supplement, which also contains vitamin C and calcium. Now, at this stage, one would have to assume that the study in question was designed by toddlers. I mean, generally the way an intervention study works is that participants are split into two groups, one acts as a control, and for the other you introduce a variable and see what effect it has. Curveball! These researchers decided that introducing three variables at the same time would actually be more fun. And when it comes to attributing any observed effects to one of these variables, well, presumably there'd be some coin flipping involved. So understandably, I wanted to learn more about this uh, study, and luckily the Hearty Souls article included a hyperlink leading me directly there. No, so I thought. Yeah, the hyperlink actually takes you to the original story on the study, which appeared on WebMD back in the year 2000. We know that accurate, trustworthy sources are hard to find through the mess online. The notable difference between the two articles is that the original WebMD article, whilst admittedly clickbaiting people into reading about whether gelatin could help cure osteoarthritis, ultimately acknowledges the glaring flaws in the study and quotes a prominent third-party expert on osteoarthritis who rightly dismisses the gelatin study. In fact, it does such a thorough job of dismantling the study that it's enough to make you wonder why they covered it at all. To quote the article, but before you hobble out to the grocery store to stock up on some gelatin, you should know that gelatin could be getting the credit for a job done by good old vitamin C. If gelatin was protective, there'd be less osteoarthritis in this country, and not more, because it's widely contained in foods. McAllendon, who treats patients with osteoarthritis, previously conducted a study looking at the role of diet in people with osteoarthritis of the knee, and found an apparent strong protective effect of high vitamin C intake on knee osteoarthritis progression. The article even ends in a mocking manner, saying, McAllendon tells WebMD that taking just 60 milligrams of vitamin C per day, in addition to the amount already in the diet, significantly reduces risk for osteoarthritis progression. As of this writing, there have been no reports about whether the same treatment effect could be seen with orange-flavored jello. Stay tuned to this channel. But all that seems to have gone over the head of the author over the hearty soul. What was their name again? Oh yes, and attributed, our articles are written by real-world experts. Anyway, whichever real-world expert it was decided to regurgitate the alleged findings of this absurd study 17 years after the fact without so much as a hint of the issues raised by the original WebMD article and passing it off as breaking news. They've presumably been nominated for their Pulitzer by now. Seriously though, despite feeling like I already knew all I needed to know about this story, I still wanted to track down the original study. I had questions, you know, questions like, was this funded by an interested industry? And how did this study design get past the peer review system? Well, to answer the latter question first, it didn't. This study has never been published in a peer-reviewed journal. But it was briefly described during the annual meeting of the American Academy of Family Physicians in Dallas, Texas back in 2000, and that's just as good. But it's not like we know nothing about this study. As this 2012 review of studies on the use of collagen derivatives in the treatment of osteoarthritis demonstrates, those physicians at the AAFP meeting in Dallas were subjected to a veritable information overload. <laughs> But whilst I knew I couldn't read about the study directly, since it hadn't been published anywhere, I still wanted to learn more about it and the individuals and organizations involved. 
Happily, the CV of one of the authors, Dr. James Ripp, told me all I needed to know, starting with why WebMD covered the story in the first place. But aside from being the reason the study was covered by WebMD and one of the authors of the study, Ripp is also the director of the institute that carried out the research, the Center for Clinical and Lifestyle Research, which would later become the Ripp Lifestyle Institute. And his website made for very interesting reading, especially the part where he proudly displays a list of his partners, presumably in the hopes of attracting more. The list begins with Kraft Foods, and as you can see, it continues in that manner, including consumer favorites such as Coca-Cola, General Mills, McDonald's, well, you can read. But it was Osteobiflex that really caught my eye, and a quick visit to their website confirmed that they sell supplements which they claim will help improve your joint health. And wouldn't you know, one of their headlining products contains as a key ingredient gelatin, which they say supports joint comfort and mobility. A statement which necessitates a tiny asterisk to denote that this statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration and that the product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease. So whilst we let these revelations about cozy partnerships, bad science and even worse journalism sink in, I'd like to take the time to read you something from the Hearty Souls About section. Are your articles reliable? When Oren and Mo first started this site, they were fed up with the rampant misinformation online. They knew that readers looking for ways to ditch the manipulative media tactics of big industry didn't need more marketing lies. You see, this is why we can't have nice things. Collagen protein is contained in pig skin, but also in human skin. And where do they end up? Indeed. Genita, improving quality of life.